Hello, everybody. This is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 19. We're going to do a little demo on how we can use uh, one of the widgets that Twitter provides to create a unique kind of cool little web page for your tweets. So even if you don't use Twitter, which I'm sure some of you do, some of you don't, uh, not a big deal. You know, some of these techniques we're going to be used, this might be applicable to you anyway, because we're going to be doing some Photoshopping and 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 CSS and HTML like we normally do. This is the bottom, the footer of CSS tricks right now. This is I had this big empty section down here, and I decided to you know since I've been using Twitter lately, I'm Chris Coyer on Twitter. If you want to follow me, uh, I built this little you know kind of widget area down here where it pulls in my latest stuff that I've posted to Twitter. So since I learned how to do that, I thought. <clears throat> be a good opportunity to do a little demonstration on how I did it and build a unique little web page to do the same thing only with you know a slightly different format so this is what we're gonna build this page that you're looking at here uh, you see it's got some design to it and it's got the same kind of look and feel as the one on CSS tricks so that's the final goal so let's get started the what we're gonna do First is design this look in Photoshop and then kind of pull it apart quick and write the code for it. So let's jump over to Photoshop and get started with that right away. I have a brand new Photoshop document open. Uh, the pixel dimensions here are kind of arbitrary, but there they are in case you want to see them. And I have filled it with kind of a dark grayish bluish color here, uh, right here. So the first thing we're going to do is throw that gradient down, like you saw. Let's create a brand new layer. Select this color and maybe lighten it up a little bit. Then we're going to grab our gradient tool. And up here, make sure that we are on the setting foreground to transparent, which is the second one in usually. And then it's set to radial. That's radial, right? And then we can kind of click and drag and create kind of that that look that we are after. We're going to be putting this gradient, we're going to tuck it up into the top left corner of the page. So uh, you don't have to worry about the gradient going off the left or the top of the page, but you do need to worry about it if it hit, if this gradient hits the, uh, the right or bottom because you don't want it to end abruptly. But let's just kind of pull out some gradient there and see if that's looking good. If you screw up, you can just select all and hit delete. I was just thinking that might be a little... Let's just call that good. Uh, uh, you can do some things like play with opacity if you think it's too strong. Maybe I will pull it down just a little bit, but there's a gradient. And then I, you saw my little Tweety Bird there. That's actually the... Uh, what I did to find that was just, I actually just Googled Twitter icon on Google Images here, and it brought this guy up. Um, as it turns out, that's the logo for Twitterific, which you can actually see up here in my menu bar, is this little application that pulls in recent stuff on Twitter. That's kind of the intellectual property of Icon Factory here, I'm just going to say. For your own personal little site, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, it's kind of even promoting their product. Maybe you want to link to Icon Factory. But I can't see it being a big problem. If you're a corporation or want to use this for any kind of money-making venture, I would, I would perhaps uh, not use this, use something else. Anyway, I grabbed him. Actually, let's just grab him now and drag him onto our desktop and open him in Photoshop, and then we can just do what we do and drop him on there. Oh, uh, this must be a JPEG version I found or something. I found one with good ping transparency earlier. So let me just go ahead and go into my final version here and drag him over. I'm not going to cheat like this every time, but I want to show you how I did this, but that works pretty good. Now we're going to create that box that we're going to contain our tweets in. So let's just grab, like you saw me grab the, uh, the rectangle tool there and draw out a box. I think that color looks okay, huh? And if you double click on it, it'll open the layer styles, which I'll bring in here. We'll give it a stroke of white, and uh, using the blend mode of overlay is kind of a cool effect, especially when you're over a gradient. You can see that kind of 
light effect, which is kind of neat. And then I had that big text on there, tweets. I used Agenda, which is just a pretty kick-ass font I've been using lately. In a big size. And we'll make it. Some kind of gray that looks good, or, oh, I don't know, we could even go white. That would look all right, huh? And press Command-T to treat free transform, and we can kind of maybe tuck it in there, something like that. And uh, let's see, let's just tweak. That's what we do, right? Move stuff around a little bit. I can grab the, uh, by command clicking on the shape there, and then click the the tweet text layer, and then add a layer mask. Reverse the layer mask, and that'll kind of give that, maybe we'll drag it underneath too, and give it kind of an effect. Then if we unmask it, we can kind of, and select the text, not the mask. You can kind of drag it around behind there, and it'll kind of give that mask effect. Hmm. Nudge, nudge. It's worth getting right because this is basically just a design project just for fun. So, let's see. Maybe he's too big. There we go. That looks okay. So, let's save this thing out. Save for web and devices use the claw. I just heard that recently to save for web and devices when you're on in Photoshop. That's command option shift S and, and there's so many modifier keys there that, that they called it the claw. I can't remember where I heard that but I thought it was funny. So JPEG looks good here and we'll save it into a, the images folder of our project here as page background and then whisk our thing away and then we'll get started with the HTML in just a minute. So here we have our HTML and CSS file. Let me, let's see if I, I think I already have them open. Let's pop them open in TextMate here. Uh, you see I have two tabs, one's for the HTML, one's for the CSS. Let's go right to the CSX actually and look at what I did for the body here. Um, I said it has a, you know, just some basic reset stuff, but then the background up in the uh, top left, we're going to put that images file that we just made and then uh, this might be for the old one so let's take a sampling of this dark color and grab this color out of here and make sure that our background color oops, is that same okay then we'll I think I have this open let's start a new tab and open our index file so we can take a look at what we have so far. Looks like I didn't quite grab that color just right. Oh, I just needed to refresh again. But that's the gist of it. So we just made that graphic, plopped it in the upper left of the body, and and then had the rest of the background color fill out. So that's how we can get the page looking like that. Now let's get there. Let's get the code that we're going to need to get our tweets in there. And what you get that from actually logging into Twitter. This is my real Twitter page. And there's a little button right here on the right side in the little sidebar that says put updates on your site. So let's just click that. Then we'll click right at the bottom into other. And then on the way right, the HTML JavaScript. And it just gives you uh, some code, which you can use and plop right into our, our, our page and, and get a Get our Twitter updates. We'll just copy it. Actually, you know, we, let's go at, let's say no title because we already kind of have a title that we built, and maybe, let's make it like ten updates. We'll grab that code and come back into our markup and paste that right into our body. So one kind of tip they mention is these script files that it includes. If you have a bigger and more complicated site than this, to put these at the bottom right before the body tag, that's already where ours are because our page is so simple. But like I said, if you're going to throw these things up in your header or something, it's best to put these script files down. 
uh, just just before the end of the body tag. This actually happened to me today. Twitter server was being kind of flaky, and uh, uh, it wasn't finishing loading my page. But what it, it did is you could see my whole page. It just didn't load my Twitter updates because I put these script files right at the bottom. So uh, it didn't screw up anybody trying to read my site, whereas it would if these things were at the top. So uh, let's save that and go reload the page again and see what it looks like. So it's it's pulling all the Twitter updates just like it said it would. That's very cool. But obviously we're going to need to dig into some CSS to get this thing looking right. So let's do that part. So let's take a look at this markup that it gave us. It basically gave us a div with an ID of Twitter underscore div and an unordered list inside of that with an ID of Twitter underscore update underscore list. Uh, so it's an empty unordered list. So obviously what it's doing here is filling that unordered list with list items of of our tweets. Let's just see if we can make this a little easier to read. So it's this JavaScript here is filling in uh, this unordered list here with stuff. So we can use these, you know, this div and this unordered list as as hooks in our CSS to style this stuff up for ourselves. So the first thing we'll do is target that Twitter div that it gave us. And we are going to use some absolute positioning here to get it exactly where we want it. Position, absolute. Um, uh, you know what? We're going to use a little some little firebug tactics. I think I'll fire up um, uh, Firefox when we need to and kind of do our nudging around and stuff in firebugs. So let's just kind of put some arbitrary values in there and worry about adjusting them later. So 168 or something like that. These are my old values. But since we made a brand new Photoshop file, um, they may be different. So we're going to give it a top and a left value, a width value, height value, and we're going to say because that those, you know, that list, you know, we said give it give us 10 updates might uh go beyond that, but we kind of have a strict box we want to keep these things in. We'll set the overflow value to auto, which will give us a scroll bar if we need it. Um Let's just leave it at this for now and jump back and take a look. Refresh the page. Uh oh. See, Twitter's trying to. It looks like that script is maybe. It's trying to grab our stuff from live from the server, but it may be having trouble doing that. I'll try to refresh another time here. So while we wait for a second, let's. To do a little typographic styling to our unordered list. Twitter update list. We can make sure, you know, we don't want the bullets, so let's just set the list style to none, and uh, we can use this opportunity to set a, a pixel size for our font. That'll be fine. Um, and then we'll target the list items themselves. And I don't know, just space them out a little bit. Can't hurt. Um, this is the color that I had chosen before. It was 7A8, A99. We may end up adjusting some of that stuff. Who knows? Uh, let's save that, and then we can go back into Firefox. Hopefully I can reload and we'll get it again. It did, uh, it loaded up just fine here, but okay, okay, there we go. This is what I was talking about. I wanted to use Firebox so we can uh, pop open Firebug and do some adjustments and stuff. We're pretty close, but we can do better here. So let's pop open Firebug and use the inspect thing and grab the div. And then we'll go on to our height value here, not height our left value here and maybe just nudge it back a little bit we'll go on our top value and bump it down a little bit our width looks like it could grow be a little wider and be safe so that's just one of these cool things firebug is super useful for and how's our height looking maybe a little too tall grab our height value and nudge it up a little bit. 
that looks about fine. So now we can we can just kind of jot down these values and use these. Maybe I can even keep this open so I can look right at it while I while I do this. Uh, our left value has now become 156. Our top value has become 120. Width 411. Height 353. And that'll get us where we need to be. So it's a little different than what you saw earlier. There's a couple little tweaks we can do. For one thing, we can set our link value to something other than, you know, default nasty blue. That's what I used before. Let me reload so we can see that. It's just kind of a nicer yellow color. And then one of the little tricks I used, uh, Let's take a look at it so you can see an example first. I think I still have it open in Safari. So well, see how these, these the, the background of these things is kind of like this fady gradient thing? Basically what I did there was I grabbed this color of the main background. And oh, one of the things we didn't do was kind of give this some opacity so you could see the transparency coming through, huh? Anyway, I'll show you what the trick is anyway. I grabbed that color. Here's a little perfect little 10 by 10 pixel thing and filled the color in that box and then dropped the opacity down to like uh, 60 looks good there. And then save this thing out as a ping 24, the kind with alpha transparency and called it um, trans blue. So then I can fill the background of those list items with a transparent color, you can you, you know you can set transparency in CSS too, but uh, if I were to set the transparency of those list items, the text inside of them would will, would have take on that transparency as well, which isn't good. It's you know we can keep the the transparency of the text full and still give it a transparent background fill by doing it this way. So let me throw that in there and let's take a look you might not be able to see it very well because our what's what's our current one I have it open in Firefox right is this our current one what did I do here just a second Yeah, this is our correct one. You just can't see it very well because it's like the same exact color of the of the the thing itself. So it's applying a transparent version of itself onto itself. You can't really see it, but you know we could make that a black or some kind of nice thing. You can see it if I have the list item selected, uh, it's you know it's being applied right there. So it's working. You just can't see it. Uh, a better example is, like I said, over here with the when we kind of had some transparency applied to this outer box, you could kind of see it. So that's how you do it. Pretty cool. So remember, you can check out articles the rest of the week while you're waiting for next week's video screencast at css-tricks.com where we have all kinds of stuff. There's articles all week long. I usually post every day, sometimes every other days. You know, but there's usually some good stuff on there throughout the week, links and stuff. Uh, also, make sure to check out uh, PSD to HTML, our sponsor for this podcast and CSS tricks in general. Uh, what they do is they take your Photoshop documents, like we were just playing around with a little bit today, but any kind of complicated layout, and you send it to them, and they will send you back uh, 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 a totally valid HTML and CSS website. Uh, they'll do just one page for you. They'll do as many pages as you want for you. They'll, you know, they'll design it around WordPress or Joomla or Drupal or any number of other uh, e-commerce and content management system kind of things. They have good prices and they do it fast and they have a money back guarantee. So definitely check out our sponsor PSD to HTML for all your needs like that. Until next week, see you later. Bye.